So I've actually been wanting to do this video for so long. I think I started compiling it together last year, probably early last year. Um, but this is my NetGalley book haul. It's basically all my ebook backlog. I'm so bad with keeping up to date. Like I used to be really, really good um, with reading like upcoming releases quite soon and reviewing them on here so my score started getting really good and then I ended up falling into the trap of requesting more than I was reviewing. I've always been more of a physical book reader than an ebook reader, so it just got out of hand. I got overexcited, overzealous, and yes, hence why I have a massive backlog. So I thought it'd be time to just document it in here, um, tell you guys a bit about the books. Um, some of them are still new, so what I'll do is I'll go from the newest to what I think's the oldest because the list that I wrote down on my phone isn't matching up entirely with the list on here. Also, NetGalley has been going through some changes of late. They recently split from just the standard.com to .co.uk as well and I've noticed that some publishers that I'm auto approved for um, I couldn't find in the .co.uk site that I would typically use now but if I were logged into my .com account I could find them so apparently that's getting sorted out I don't know if it's across the board or if it's just for that particular publisher that I was talking with but that's a thing so I didn't know if they would differ um, across the both sites so I've got .com and .co.uk just in case I'm currently on the .co.uk they seem to be mirroring the same so far anyway I feel like I'm probably getting out of shot quite a bit so let's start with this one so Gina from Siberia was my most recent um, thing I downloaded it apparently on the 29th of May it's not on my Kindle so I'm gonna have to try and re-download it I don't know if it's just because um, it's a I think it's a graphic novel so perhaps that's why it's not showing up on my Kindle because I can't access certain graphic novels on there I'm gonna go to that tab just because had it open to remind myself to check it out in a bit. Anyway, so Gina from Siberia by Jane Burstein and Charlotte Lynn. Literally, I'm just going to be reading you guys what it's about. Um, hopefully, it will make me more excited about picking them up again soon. Let's hope. So yeah, this is by Animal Media Group LLC. I'm auto proof them. Love this stuff. They're awesome. So based on the true story of Gina, we are wirehead. What? Based on a true story of Gina, a wire-haired terrier whose family snuck her out of Siberia into the USA at the conclusion of the Cold War. This beautiful and thrilling tale follows Gina as her family travels on a bus, train, car, plane and minivan. Upon arrival at a new home, 5,681 miles away from her old home, sorry there's a fly in here, Gina is not happy and lets everyone about her know, about, around her know it. But slowly she comes to accept her new surroundings with the help of her new friend Victor, a large boxer. Um, talking about her friends and family back home in Siberia heals the emotional wounds making Gina believe just maybe her new home um, isn't so bad after all. I thought that sounded adorable. Um, children's fiction, historical fiction sounds super cute following the life of a dog moving from country to another country and I don't know I just thought that was bloody adorable. Adorable? Adorable. <laughs> okay next one here. Please don't grab my pussy. <laughs> So this one I was curious about because obviously the name struck struck me, then the illustration and then the name Julia Young because um, there's this author called Lucian Young that's like political satire as well. I was wondering if they're related, I don't actually know if they are or if they're not um, but he wrote things um, like the Alice in Brexit land, that sort of stuff. So yes, Please Don't Grab My Pussy by Julia Young and Matt Harkins. Um, this is another one from the Animal Media Group. That I'm auto approved for. So obviously it striked striked me, it intrigued me because of the bold bras and name and everything and I was like oh my god I do like a bit of political satire every now and then. So through campy pop culture rhymes and beautiful oil paintings the narrator of our book guides you through a list of things you can grab while offering more poetic ways to refer to a woman's genitalia than the word pussy that Trump's so vulgarly used. Um, as the narrator goes on, she lets you know more about her relatives, a reclusive aunt with a lazy eye and her interests, Justin Bieber's Instagram, while never losing sight of her mission to make the president as uncomfortable as possible. Um, I'll just leave it there. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be a good one. I hope I enjoy it. I think it might be a short read. I don't know if it says how many pages it's got. I might be missing that, but it looked um, it looks good. It looks good. So I thought, check that out as well. 
Another one of the ones that are most, most recent, um, I downloaded it on the 29th of May. I should be giving you guys their publication dates. So, Gina from Siberia is uh, going to be released on the 14th of September. Uh, please don't grab my pussy. It is going to be released on the 9th of November. Wolf Spire by Bruce H. Markelson is going to be released on the 15th. Well, okay, that was released on the 15th of December 2016. I guess maybe they're resurfacing it. I don't know. Um, so, let's have a little look at this one. Honestly, this sounds really bad. A lot of the time on NetGalley, if it's an author I know, I will request it. If it's a cover that's attractive, I'll request it. And then the, the least thing I do is like I read at least the first sentence or I skim it and then I'm like, if that sounds interesting, I'll request it. So I'm like really request happy. Um, so yes, this one is a mystery thriller, teen YA. Uh, it's got a little excerpt as well actually, if I want to check that out. So, there are plans for a coup in the Russian Federation. The conspirators had obtained the Russian nuclear codes. The CIA has stolen that information and dead dropped it inside a whiskey flask in the middle of Siberia. They need someone who could go fetch the item among hordes of Russian soldiers, minefields, snipers, helicopters, hunters and attack dogs. They need someone who could survive the harsh Russian wilderness. They need someone who could traverse the vast expanse of Siberia faster than anyone. Above all else, they need someone who could be so covert that they could not give away any evidence of American involvement probably hit me because I've I think maybe around the time that I saw this I was still in my stupor of like um, the buzz that I had with the man in the high castle the TV show um, so I think I wanted some more spy kind of things like that um, sort of I guess I would it's to me it sounds a little bit like historical fiction but I don't know when it's going to be set so but yeah that sounds good so it's one of those books that I have to be in the mood for and obviously I was in the mindset of that mood when I requested it. Um, the Beast Heart by Life or Leaf Shall Cross. I don't know how to pronounce that. This is going to, well, this was published in the 3rd of May 2018. So have a little look at this one then. I hope you guys don't mind this. I just thought it'd be nice to catalogue it. Even if you guys don't enjoy it, it's like, I like documenting random things like this. I'm a list maker. Um, I had these all written down in my book and I thought, let's make a video out of it. I don't know. So yes, The Beast's Heart. Ah, this one I remember I was really excited about. Um, Beauty and the Beast reimagined from the Beast's point of view. So I hope this is done well. Um, it's just romance. I don't know what the age group's going to be. I don't know if they're going to try and keep it like Disney. You know what I mean? So a sumptuously magical brand, new tech. Well, I said that really weird. A sumptuously magical brand new take on a town as old as time. Read the beast sides of the story at long last. I don't need to go into depth about this part here, but um, I just think the cover is absolutely stunning. I really, really hope I like this one. I think things like this can be really, really, um, to me, beneficial to get inside someone else's head, um, only if it's done right. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go down to the list that says older than three months. I have loads. <laughs> Terrible, I know. So we'll go with Smoke Thieves, which was released on the 3rd of May. So this, of course, is by Sally Green, author buyer for me. I loved her um, Half Bad series. I think they're amazing books. And I believe this is a new series that she's doing. So this is described as sci-fi and fantasy, Y18. Um, and I'll just read you a little bit here. The first book in the new historical fantasy, all oh, historical fantasy, I probably got really excited about that as well, series from the author of Half Bad, a princess, a traitor, a soldier, a hunter and a thief, five teenagers with the fate of the world in their hands, five nations destined for conflict. In Brigant, Princess Catherine prepares for a political marriage arranged by the brutal and ambitious father, while her true love, Ambrose, faces the executioner's block. In Calidor, a downtrodden servant, March seeks, March seeks revenge on the prince who betrayed his people. In Pretoria, feckless um, Edion, I'm liking these names, but I can't pronounce them, steals cheap baubles for cheaper thrills as he drifts from town to town. And in the barren Northern Territories, 13-year-old Tash is running for her life as she plays bait with the gruff demon hunter Gravel. As alliances shift and shatter and old certainties are overturned, our five heroes find their past lives transformed and their futures inextricably linked by the unpredictable tides of magic and war. Who will rise and who will fall and who will claim the ultimate prize? I think this sounds absolutely amazing. It says for those who like Game of Thrones um, and Sarah J Mars. I like both of those. I uh, haven't read The Red Queen so I wouldn't know. But I'm really excited. I need to get to this one. I really do. I'm really excited. Might do it for a holiday. I don't know. Like a holiday read, I mean. So next one here is Ponty by Charlene Teo. This one was released in the 
in on the 19th of April. Uh, let's have a look. I think this one another, was another cover by for me. It looks absolutely beauty, beautiful. And literary fiction. Yes, I think this might have been nominated as one of like maybe it was a long list of like maybe the man brooker's prize I, I don't really know too much about those prizes but i feel like i heard um, mercy from mercy's because we should talk about this or mention it somewhere i don't really know but yes um 2003 singapore friendless and fatherless 16 year old sue lives in the shadow of her mother and missa once a beautiful actress and now a hack medium performing seances with her sister in a rusty house when sue I hope I'm pronouncing this right, meets the privileged ass's tongue Cersei, an unlikely encounter develops into an intense friendship and offers Sue uh, a means of escape from her mother's alarming solitariness. I don't want to read too much about that, I feel like any more could throw it, make, give me too much if that makes sense. The name Cersei is sticking out to me because I'm thinking of my Greek mythology and I'm wondering if it's going to be the same thing, so I'm going to leave it there but that sounds interesting. Again literary fiction one of those things that I have to be in the mood for trying to ease myself into it um I'm not intelligent enough to understand literary fiction so that's why I like I take it step by step then we've got this is just my face by Gabore Sidibe I don't know I think she's like an actress or something but I just thought it sounded cool um 7th of June 2018 is when this was published oh I'm trying to whiz through all of these <laughs> All right, so this one, um, it is biography, memoir, humour. Um, this is just my face. It's the whirlwind tour of Gabare, uh, her life so far. In it, we meet her polygamous father. Poly oh, I don't, why can't I talk? Polygamous father, her gifted mother who fed the family by busking on the subway, and the psychic who told her she'd one day be famous like Oprah. Gabby shows us around the Harlem studio apartment where she grew up, relives the deliberating depression that hit her at college, and reminisces about her first ever job as a phone sex talker. Less creepy than you'd think. With exhilaratingly honest and often hilarious dispatches on friendship, depression, celebrity hate as fashion, race, and weight, this is just my face will resonate with anyone who has ever felt different and with anyone who had ever felt inspired to make a dream come true. I think this is going to be amazing. Is she an actress? I, I don't know. I feel like I've seen her somewhere before. I don't know. Please let me know. But it just sounded right up my street. Um, again, something I don't read as often, biographies, memoirs, that sort of stuff. But I think this might be a good one, hopefully. Um, you might notice in, in a theme um, that I do go for more, not outlandish, what's the word? Books that I wouldn't usually pick up and buy when I'm on NetGalley because it's like there's a risk I'm not having to pay money do you know what I mean like as silly as that sounds I'm not forking out money on something that I might hate so this is just where I experiment um you might realize in a little while um and then we've got The Charmed Life of Alex Moore by Molly Flat and this was also um published on the 3rd of May so this one here this one is general fiction adult women's fiction again a genre that I haven't dipped too much into um, let's see. In the past six months, Alex Moore, Alex Moore has quit her dead end job, launched her dream startup, and become one of London's fastest rising tech stars. But then weird things start to happen: muggins, stalkings, fake BBC journals, journalists. And when Alex is invited to visit a remote academic institute, weird turns into what the fuck. So yeah, I don't want to. This again, this is one of those books I don't want to know too much about as well. I feel like it'd be like a nice sort of in manga terms it would be slice of life do you know what i mean um but yeah i'm trying to get more into that sort of i guess maybe contemporary general fiction you know what i mean um in regular literature novel stuff i'm rambling <laughs> next ones i'm really really excited about i can't believe i haven't read yet so these are spanned over the 15th of february to the 21st of december and these are the pets at oh no there's another one here's the other one uh the other one was released on the 23rd of november these are the pets at primrose cottage um they split into four sections but when they're sold in paperback they are like they're basically one book um but this is just how uh, sheila norton releases her books on that galley i don't know why it's fun to read it's easier to read i guess i loved her vets at hope green series they were amazing i've got videos i'll link them i'll link the first one in the cards or something but I thought they were amazing. I really, really did love those books. Um, and when I knew that, she, when I found out she was doing another series, I thought I've got to read this. So what I'll do is I'll just read you the synopsis for the first book because basically that is almost the premise for the whole thing. But they are almost, I guess, episodic in a way, but not in a bad way. Um, I guess that's why it makes it nice and easy to read 
in the four sections that she splits them in for good reads um so yeah this is just general fiction adult these are lovely lovely books right emma nightingale needs a place to hide away pursued by the demons left by her ex-boyfriend she takes refuge in a, in a quiet crickleford a sleepy town um in dartmoor where she can lay lie lay lie lay lie lay lie life in crickle food is quite peaceful but it won't be long if people discover the truth about emma's past not wanting to make too much of a fuss she ends up lying about why she's there she's looking after some cats she says and suddenly the town's new pet sitter is in high demand while looking after an alistan emma finds all attention is on her and the handsome young reporter from the local paper that takes interest in her story i'm really excited i find these reads to be very cozy and quaint and they just get me happy and I, I don't know i like them Next one, I, this was also like an author by, um, it's written by Will I Am and Brian David Johnson, who unfortunately I don't know the latter, I do apologise. This was released on the 25th of January. I saw the book in Asda a couple of months ago and it just it looks gorgeous in person, really, really pretty. Um, it's called War, Wizards and Robots. And I thought, oh my God, this sounds batshit crazy. Pretty much like how Will I Am is, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, it says, an explosive action adventure novel created by Will I Am and renowned futuristic futurist brian david johnson wizards are real robots in the future are here and the fate of our world rests in the hands of one unsuspecting teenager sorry i got itchy nose and um, when a young man breaks into her home claiming her life is in danger ada Lurin's world changes forever jella or gella is a wizard um on the run from his father's hidden clan who want to kill ada and her mother sarah Lurin is a scientist who will create the first robot the wizard's age old foes but a robot has travelled back in time to find Ada and will let everything on the line to protect her as she may just be the key to preventing the Earth's destruction in the future. Ada, Jella and the robots must learn to work together to change the past and secure the future. But they don't have much time before a mysterious enemy launches its attack on Earth. That just sounds like an awesome, crazy, adventure sci-fi story. I need to read this. I'm getting really excited, can you tell? <laughs> All right, and then we've got With the End in Mind by Catherine Mannix. This was released December last year. Um, let's have a little look. So this one says, when it wants to load, it is Biography and Memoir. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, I remember. Wow, yeah, another one that I have to be in the mood for. Okay, so told through a series of beautifully crafted stories from taken from nearly four decades of clinical practice, her book answers the most intimate questions about the process of dying with touch and honesty and humanity. She, she makes a compelling case for the therapeutic power of approaching death not with trepidation but with openness, clarity and understanding. Um, with the end in mind as a book for us all, the grieving and bereaved, ill and healthy, open these pages and you will find stories about people who are like you and like people and you know and love. You'll meet Holly who danced her last day away, Eric the retired head teacher who even with the motor neuron disease gets things done, loving tender-hearted Nellie and Joe, each live in a lonely life to save the beloved from distress and Sylvie, 19, dying of leukemia, sewing a cushion for her mum to hug by the fire after she has died. This is just, uh, this is going to be one of those reads that break me. I don't know if I could read it all in one go, but I think knowing that in my head, I'd be mentally putting it off. But it sounds amazing, really. As amazing as it can sound, you know, <laughs> what it's about. Um, then The Water Cure. I think this is another one I've seen in Asda, actually. This is by Sophie McIntosh. This was released late uh, end of May, just gone, which is cool. Um, so this one is about... Oh, that's what strike stroke me, stroke me, strike me. Hot milk. I don't know what that is. The girls I absolutely loved. I read like two years ago. Handmaid's Handmaid's Tower. I've been really intrigued to check out, especially because the TV show's been going on. I think I've recorded some of that. Anyway, general fiction, literary fiction. Again, you can tell uh, a lot of these are literary fiction. I think because I was hearing about some of these um, from various booktube channels, and I was like, let me see if I can find any of them. You know. Anyway. So this is the debut of the summer 2018 apparently, so an extraordinary debut, no debut novel, otherworldly, why am I reading these parts? I don't want to read that part, where is, where is the actual thing? Right, okay, here we are. The pool, imagine a world very close to our own where women are not safe in their bodies, where desperate measures are required to raise a daughter. This is the story of Grace, Leah and Skye, kept apart from the world for their own good and taught the terrible things that every woman must learn about love. And it is the story of the men who come to find them, the three strangers washed up by the sea, their gaze is hungry and insistent, trailing desire and destruction in their wake. The water cure is a fever dream, a blazing vision of suffering, sisterhood and transformation. This sounds amazing. If it's got the same sort of 
tint and tone as the girls did I think it could be something that I really do enjoy and the type of literary fiction that I can understand and read and enjoy you know uh, the next one here is where the stars rise this was released October last year uh, let's have a little quick look these are by a plethora of authors um, science oh Asian science fiction and fantasy that's amazing so let's have a little look so it says here follow 23 science fiction and fantasy authors on their journeys through Asia and beyond stories that explore magic and science stories about love revenge and choices stories that challenge ideas about race belonging and politics stories about where we come from and where we are going each wrestling between ghostly past and uncertain future each trying to find a voice in history that sounds amazing I think at this point as well I was looking for more combined stories so I could almost have a taste of different authors like a lot of different authors without them being like samples if you know what I mean like full-on short stories yeah but enough to make me gauge whether I want to read more from them and that especially in the science fiction because I feel like I don't have or I haven't read enough sci-fi uh, the next one here is Purple Hearts. This is actually, I think, the fourth in a series. I won't click on that there because I don't want to spoil anything. It's by Michael Grant. This one came out um, February this year. But it is, I've got one of the World Book Day books, which was like a little um, novella for this series. But I believe it's an alternate um, history fiction where the women were sent to war. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember um, as well as I think I do, I think the women are sent to war instead of the men. It's like an alternate um, history. Um, yeah, I still need to check that out. Again, very intrigued because around the time Man in the High Castle was out and very excited, very excited indeed. Um, the next one here is Devil's Day by Andrew Michael Hurley. This was released October last year. I don't know how these things are ordered. Like, how are they? How are they ordered? Anyway, <laughs> so this is again general fiction. This reminds me, that's it, it reminds me of that book The Lonely and I think that's why I picked it up. I don't know if it's like a part of the same world or, or not, um, but anyway. Every autumn, John Pentecost returns to the farm where he grew up to help gather the sheep down from the moors for the winter. Very little changes in the endlands, but this year his grandfather, the gaffer, has died and John's new wife, Catherine, is accompanying him for the first time. Each year the gaffer would withdraw the boundary lines of the village with pen and paper, but also through the remembrance of tales in timeless communal riches, which keep the sheep safe from the devil. But as the farmers of the endlands bury the gaffer and prepare to gather the sheep, they begin to wonder whether they've let the devil in after all. I just thought this sounded like, um, like almost like a folklore, uh, very rural beliefs that sound really interesting to me. So I am hoping it delivers. I'm hoping it's like almost like a superstitious sort of thing. Is the devil actually real? Is it actually like that? Do you know what I mean? Especially because it doesn't say it's fantasy. It's like general fiction. So I'm wondering how how that becomes how that story develops oh i'm getting so excited now okay the girl in the tower i will not click on this i've actually got um an arc copy that i won from goodreads as well so i can flip in and out of physical and ebook if i choose to this was released january um this year like late january by katherine arden by the way um so the girl in the tower is the second book to the bear and the nightingale i think it's going to be a trilogy i will link the review of the first book for you it's I think it's an amazing book. It's like um, Russian fantasy, like medieval almost times. It's an amazing, ow, hurt my finger. It's an amazing book, honestly. I really did enjoy it. Um, next up, we have the, I don't know how to pronounce this, The Gnomon um, by Nick Harkaway. This was released November last year. Ah, I guess so. This one intrigued me because not only was it sci fi fantasy, it was literary fiction. And I couldn't comprehend in my mind how that would work, like how those two genres would go together so I was like okay let's check this out um really lovely cover as well actually I like the use of orange and then the black and grey and white in the background very interesting so um near future Britain is not just a nation under surveillance but one built it built on it a radical experiment in personal transparency an ambient direct democracy every action is seen every word is recorded this sounds like it could be like George Orwell 19 is it 88 still haven't read that book but it's almost like that big brother is watching you sort of thing um diana hunter these sort of things really fascinate me but it's frightening at the same time um diana hunter is a refusenik 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 
a has-been cult novelist who lives in a yeah, in a house of its own Faraday cage. No electronic signals can enter or leave. She runs a lending library and conducts business by barter. She's off the grid in a society where the grid is everything. Denounced, arrested and interrogated by a machine that reads your life history from your brain. She dies in custody. Bloody hell! And then it's got a bit about the investigator. Um, oh, so it's telling you a little snippet about each character that you've got, I think. So it's more than uh, one perspective, more than dual perspective by the sound of things. This sounds interesting, perhaps another one I don't want to go in knowing too much. Uh, let's see what we've got next. I've already talked about the Pets at Primrose Cottage. Profane Fire at the Altar of the Lord. This one sounded interesting, but it's one of those things that in my mind I'm like, will I ever get around to reading? That sounds terrible. Um, but, but this is by Dennis Malay. Malay? This was released January of this year. Um, let's have a little, a little look at this then. This is historical fiction humour. That's it. Histor historical fiction frightens me. But the humour is what got me. I thought maybe this would be easier to read then. But I don't know. I still haven't got around to it quite clearly. Um, so David is a merchant of deceit. A poet of lies. I remember this now. A dwarf. He claims to be a prince of the lost tribe of Israel. Along with his manservant Di Diogo. An actor. The masquerade enthralls the citizens of Rome. Jews whisper that David is the Messiah. He promises that destruction awaits the Muslim Turks. If Christian Dom joins with its powerful desert tribe. But why hurry? The food and beds are warm. The ladies plump and willing. In a faraway from France, a warlord struggles to regain honour. He's the Duke of Bourbon, the victor in a great military conquest, who has lost his family fortune. His mercenaries go underfurred and poorly shod. The money to pay the wages is in Rome. Richly researched and irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> irrelevant irreverent this story weaves actual historical characters and institutions into a ride hall of three men each in a quest for fame and fortune i think that's what threw me off a little bit i felt like i'd need to have done research myself into knowing who these people are um but hopefully it's something that we get introduced to slowly and i can understand it and enjoy the humor and kind of get it a little bit but who knows who knows um then there's these trio of books i believe the change paris the change new york and the change london orbital by guy adams i think it's the trio i don't know if i'm going to find the fourth one on the other page now um but they were all released on the 13th of july 2007 so if we go into the change i think that might be the first one i think they're all if i remember correctly you can read them as single books each but it makes sense almost to read them together um oh shit this is the third title of a six book novella aimed at young adults market Let's pretend I didn't read that. So yeah, um, <laughs> as you can tell, I just realised that this third title in a six book series novella. So I'm guessing London Orbital is the uh, first one. Let's have a little look. Okay, yeah, this is the first in a six book novella series. Phew, The Change London Orbital. I don't feel like that spoiled anything for me because I didn't know what they were talking about anyway. But it says Howard doesn't know where he is or how he got there. He, he's not even sure his name is Howard, but he knows he's in trouble. Alone in a stretch of motorway jammed with broken down cars full of corpses and strange creatures, Howard falls into in with a motorbike gang living in a nearby service station. But even the kingdom of the welcome break can't keep him safe. Something is moving between the rows of cars, something that used to be human but now clanks with metal, hisses with hydraulics, and is always on the lookout for new parts. Um, yeah, again, something, oh, horror, teens and YA, something that might be an easy quick read. They are novellas, so I'm assuming shorter um, amount of pages, but Something that I'm less excited about now, as terrible as that might sound. I need a juice break. <laughs> okay, guys, then we have The Night Child. Oh, this is another one that excites me, actually, just looking at it. Um, by Anna Quinn. This one was released at the end of January this year. All right, so this, again, literary fiction, woman's fiction. Um, Nora Brown teaches high school English and lives a quiet life in Seattle with her husband and six-year-old daughter. But on November day, moments after dismissing her class, Sorry, something was crawling on my leg. Um, a girl's face appears above the student's desk. A wild, numerous face, numinous face, with startling blue eyes. A face floating on top of shapeless drapes of purples and blues, where arms and legs should never have been, should have been. Terror rushes through Nora's body, the kind of raw terror you feel when there's no way out. When every cell in the body, your entire body is on fire, when you think you might die. 24 hours later, while on Thanksgiving vacation, the face appears again. Shaken and unsteady, Nora meets with neurologists and eventually a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist, sorry. Um, as the, I feel like I corrected myself, but I said it wrong again. As the story progresses, a terrible secret is discovered, a secret that pushes Nora toward an even day, deeper psychological breakdown. This sounds just so 
creepy and like weird like I don't know in which way it's gonna go um and the <laughs> the feeling of unknown fear and horror is probably again something that keeps me reluctant to dive into this uh, I'm such a scaredy cat honestly Holding by Graham Norton again another author by I like Graham Norton I think it's funny I love him on Eurovision doing the commentary for us um, this was released August last year so I thought it was going to be a autobiography but it's actually like a, a novel um, so it's general fiction a dull it's a really nice cover actually as well so the remote Irish village of Dunleen has known little drama but when the human remains are discovered on an old farm suspected to be that of Tommy Burke a former lover of two different inhabitants the village's dark past begins to unravel as a frustrated sergeant PJ Collins struggles to solve a genuine case for the first time in his life he unearths the community's worth of anger and resentment secrets and regret I'm wondering if um, Graham Norton please don't make this twisted or anything but I'm wondering if he wrote this alone um because I I, pers I don't follow him I don't stalk him I don't know any much about him but I've not known him to be like an author before so I'm wondering is this in companion with another author or like he's using his name maybe to promote the book a bit more or did he write this all in his own I'd love to know I could probably research that myself but you know <laughs> uh, next up we have The Girlfriend I think some more of these are like general fiction literary fiction that sort of stuff so The Girlfriend by Michelle Francis which was released again um, end of January this year so this one um, is mystery thriller general fiction um, Laura has it all, a successful career, a long marriage to a rich husband and a 23 year old son Daniel who is kind, handsome and talented. Then Daniel meets Cherry. Cherry is young, beautiful and smart but she hasn't lived Laura's golden life and she wants it. When tragedy strikes, a decision is made and a lie is told, a lie so terrible that it changes forever. I think this is going to be an interesting um, showcase of female relationships and how savage they can be. Um, so yeah, it sounds like that could be an interesting look more at character development rather than story development, but who knows. Um, then we've got The Marriage Pact, this one I've seen about in Asda doing that as well. This is by Michelle Richmond, and this was released December last year. So let's have a little gander at that. So this is again, mystery filler, uh, thriller, women's fiction. What does that even mean? I, I don't know if I like that term. Right, so, oh, apparently it was the new Richard and Judy book club thriller and Sunday dance bestseller, the perfect heart-stopping thriller of, I don't know what year. I'm assuming 2017, I don't know. First come loves, then comes marriage, then comes your first big mistake. Oh, okay. How far are you willing to go for the perfect relationship? Newlyweds Jake and Alice are offered a mysterious wedding gift. Membership of a club which promises its couples will never divorce. Signing the pact seems the start to the perfect marriage until one of them breaks the rules. The marriage of their dreams is about to become the worst nightmare because pact is, the pact is for life and its members will do anything to make sure no one leaves. That sounds really creepy. Again, um, it's got those cult vibes that always is something that intrigues me but at the same time frightens me so very much <laughs> then we've got love is love by Metty Buck uh, this was released August last year um, let's have a little look at this one so insecure oh yes I remember this I recognize the cover actually insecure about her body and happy at home Emmy will do anything to make herself more likable after rumors spread about Emmy's sexual experience with a popular classmate she decides to leave home to stay with her uncle's family in Vancouver her cool sophisticated cousin Paige introduces Emmy to transgender Jude and Emmy and Emmy is instantly attracted to him oh sorry I just burped Emmy is never sure where she stands with Jude and can't believe that such a confident charismatic guy might actually be interested in her both her mother and Paige warn her to stay away from Jude um, saying that he would just use her and she would get hurt but as Emmy gets to know Jude and his story she realises it's worth to put your true self out there for real love this sounds awesome I think it might be quite cute again it might be a nice read for when I go on holiday then we've got The Man Who Loved Libraries by Andrew Larson. This was released again August last year. So this is a biography, a memoir, children's non-fiction. Looks really cool. Um, when he was a child in the 1840s, uh, 14s, 40s, Andrew Carnage and his family immigrated to America in search of a new beginning. His working class Scottish family arrived at the height of the Industrial Revolution. Carnage worked hard in factories and telegraphy. He invested in railroads, eventually becoming the richest man in the world during this time. So. I like the fact that apparently it's told simply lyrical text. Um, my dinner's ready. <laughs> it's like 10:15 <10,> p.m. 
Um, yeah, so I think this is going to be um, nicely displayed. The man who loves libraries. It called to me. I mean, come on, libraries. I love them. Books, love them. So I'm hoping this will be a nice, easy to read bit of history, bit of you know background knowledge to some people that existed. <laughs> And then we've got Penhal Woods. This is another one that I keep seeing the cover of and I'm like, hmm, this is exciting. This is by Julia Thomas and it was released July last year. Dookie. Again, we've got some general fiction adult um, mystery thriller. So on a cold December night in Cornwall, Nanny Karen Peterson disappeared with three-year-old Sophie Flynn. The next day, the child's body was found on a riverbank in Penhal Wood. A year later, Sophie's mother, Iris Flynn, appears on the doorstep of an investigating officer, Rob McIntyre, determined to make him reopen her daughter's case. McIntyre has his own personal demons, but Iris hijacks his life in order to find the woman she thinks is responsible for Sophie's death. Following the slimmest of leads, they are soon confronting ghosts in the past and a chameleon-like killer who do anything to stay hidden. Ooh creepy <laughs> i don't know if it's going to be one of those books that stay with me though but it is general fiction so it might have more of like an oomph about it like general you know that sort of i'm getting general and literary fiction mixed up nah it might not have an oomph but it might do i don't know judas by amos oz um this was released the 15th of september 2016 what okie dokie Shmuel, a young idealistic student, is drawn to a mysterious handwritten note on a campus notice board. This takes him to a strange house where an elderly inv invalid man requires a paid companion to argue with and to read to him. But there is someone else in the house too, a woman who is trailed by ghosts from her past. Shmuel is captivated by her sexual obsession which evolves into gentle love and devotion. Then he is pulled to the old man, an intellectual obsession which also evolves into gentle love and devotion. Shmuel begins to uncover the house's tangled history and, in doing so, reaches an understanding that harks back not only to the beginning of the Jewish-Arab conflict, but also the beginning of Jerusalem itself, Christianity, to Judaism, to Judas. This sounds so cool, honestly. It's another one of those hefty sounding books that might be a bit difficult for me to read, but by gosh, I will try it one day. I will try it. Then we've got, I think I'm almost done, Fever Dream by Samantha Shrubri... Shrub... Shrub... Ah, I'm sorry, I can't say that. Shrublin? 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 Um, this was released March last year. Um, I just look at the covers and sometimes I think, does that look and sound like a big book? <laughs> and then that sort of uh, pushes me away a little bit. So a young woman named Amanda lies dying in a rural hospital clinic. A boy named David sits beside her. She's not his mother, he's not her child. The two seem anxious and, at David's ever more insistent prompting, Amanda recounts a series of events in the apparently recent past. As David pushes her to recall whatever trauma has landed her in this turmoil state, he unwittingly opens a chest of horrors and suddenly the terrifying nature of her reali their reality is brought into shocking focus. I think again this is going to be more of like a study on characters, it could be something that can really stay with me, so I need to be really focused and in the mood to read such heavy sounding books like that. And then we've got The Unseen by Roy Jacobson, um, Roy Jacobson, Don Darlet, what, trans, what is that, what does that mean, I don't understand what I'm looking at. Uh, okay, Don Bartlett and John, Don Shaw, uh, this was published 24th, 25th August 2016. So, Ingrid Barrow is born on an island that bears her name, a hold fast for a single family, their livestock, their crops, their hopes and dreams. Her father her dreams of building a quay that will connect them to the mainland, but closer ties to the wider world come at a price. Her mother has her own dreams, more children, a smaller island, a different life, and there is one question Ingrid must never ask her. Um, okay. Oh, it's set in Norway. This too is breaking up to the wider. Ooh. This sounds cool. Apparently, let's see, translated from Norwegian, but ah, oh, I see. Okay, translated. That's what that meant. I didn't understand why it said translate, but yeah, translated by these guys. This sounds awesome. Again, um, I think I was getting inspired to read like cold sounding translations um, by Mercy's Wicked Musings because she's always reading about cold places and then translated fiction as well. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> then we've got Tree Magic by Harriet Springbet. Um, this was released March last year. 
So it's children's fiction, so it should be easier to read. 13 year old Rainbow discovers that she can communicate with trees, but that's just the beginning. Her magic hands can shape trees at her will, but her gift is dangerous and has fatal consequences. An accident that leaves Rainbow unconsciously to her mother to make a confession that will change Rainbow's life forever. Are her abilities a gift or a curse? Can she really trust her mother? From England to France, through secrets, fears, and parallel worlds, Rainbow's journey to understand her powers take her beyond everything she's ever known. To find the truth, she must also find herself. This sounds like it'd be a cute like inner self finding magical little kids book which I'm hoping will be fun I don't know if it's a series though sounds like it's a standalone I'm not too sure then we've got The Magnificent Flying Baron Estate by Eric Boa um, released May last year Again, I think I recognise the cover for this one, actually. Yeah, it's cute. This is middle grade. Um, so it says, The year is 1891 and Wild Old Baron has just woken up to find his house flying. No, wait, floating. Floating a thousand feet above the ground. His inventor parents have just transformed their house into a flying machine, which they've entered into a race around the country. But fortunately for WB, who knows less about science than the average tapeworm, that means missing a show star and the hero of his favourite adventure novels, Sheriff Graham. The Comparably klutzy WB gets his own taste of the Wild West when his family's flying house is hijacked by Rose Blackwood, the sister of Sheriff Graham's greatest nemesis, the vilest villain, the cruelest criminal, Benedict Blackwood. Rose forces the Barons to continue their race so that she can steal the prize money and break her brother out of jail. <laughs> this sounds really cute. I think I'm going to enjoy this one. It's going to be a fun little middle grade read, hopefully. Might get a bit more out of it, a bit more lasting power than I expect. And then we've got Dracora by Lynette Noni, uh, which was released April last year. I think I recognise, I feel like this is the series. Yeah, I recognise the series of this and I don't think this is the first one, but I believe, oh, what's her name? Katarina uh, from The Little Book Owl has I think she has a review about these but this isn't the first book and I can't remember what the first series the first book is about but I think it's about finding a new world or something like that don't want to spoil it for anyone so I won't go into too much depth and then we've got Flight of a Starling these are getting like to be the older ones now um this is by Lisa Hethfield uh, released in June last year so this one says, uh, Rita and Lowe, sisters and best friends, have spent their lives on the wing, flying through the air in a trapeze act, never staying in one place for long, behind the great grease paint and the glitter, they know the true magic is the family they travel with, until Lowe meets a boy, suddenly she wants nothing more than to stay still, and as the secret starts to tear apart the close knit circus community, how far will Lowe go to keep her feet on the ground? This sounds really, really sweet actually. Um, as well because I've been really getting into like the idea of circuses and stuff obviously The Greatest Showman really really enjoyed that stuff like that this is intriguing me a little bit more now um I'm I'm quite excited I need to get to these things sooner then we've got Fingers in the Sparkle Jar uh, by Chris Packham this is definitely a cover read because what a cover by I guess you'd call it because it's bright orange um again this was released last year in April uh let's have a little bookie so uh, an, introvert, an introverted, unusual young boy, isolated by his obsessions and alone at school, um, Chris Parkham only felt at ease in the fields and woods around his suburban home. But when he stole a young kestrel from its nest, he was about to embark on a friendship that would teach him what it is meant to, be, what it is meant to love what it meant to love and that would change him forever in his rich lyrical and emotional exposing memoir chris brings to life his childhood in the 70s from his bre seven why do i keep putting teens at the end of one 70s from his bedroom bursting with fox skulls bird's eggs and sweaty jam jars to his feral adventures this sounds so good um i keep forgetting that it's a biography it just sounds so mesmerizing reading synopsis and we've got the New Beginnings Coffee Club. I was looking for some easy light reads. I think this is probably between the time that I finished the Bets at Hope Green and I was waiting maybe for the next series to come out by, um, by Sheila Norton. So yeah, this seemed like a nice easy one. It might be another one I could read in holiday maybe. But this is by Samantha Tum and it came out May last year. So, everyone deserves a second chance, don't they? Jenny Masters finds herself living a modern dream. Wife to a millionaire, living in a mansion, and mother to Kardashian-obsessed 10-year-old April. There isn't anything missing, until her whole world comes crashing down, forcing Jenny and April to leave behind their glittering life and start over with nothing. 
I don't want to read anymore, but I believe she starts up a, a new coffee shop in or coffee club thing in a little village when she's trying to remake her life and just it's more of a simplistic lifestyle and because the first beginning part of it is just not something that I would ideally pick up but I like how it could possibly go into a nice simple way of life sounding book um, and then we've got Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward which was released September last year I'm just gonna let my mum now be down for dinner in a minute <laughs> I'm seeing all these books on my list on my phone and I'm like dude where are they and then it's clicked they're not in that list because I've already read them and reviewed them and I was gonna say to myself I will put all the maybe I did say it actually I'm gonna put all the ones that I read on over here but you know I've spoken about that it's old news now um, they've all been read and reviewed no wonder why it wasn't going in the order that I expected to, it to go in silly me um, so let's have a look in Jasmine Ward's first novel since her national award winning book blah 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 I don't want to read that here we are here's the story premise right Jojo is 13 years old and is trying to understand what it means to be a man he doesn't lack his in fathers to study chief among them his black grandfather Pop but there are other men who can complicate his understanding. His absent white father, Michael, who is being released from prison. His absent white grandfather, Big Joseph, who won't acknowledge his existence. And the memories of his dead uncle, Given, who died as a teenager. His mother, Leone, is such a pretty name, is an inconsistent presence in his and his toddler sister's lives. She is an imperfect mother in constant conflict with herself and those around her. She is black and her children's father is white. She wants to be a better mother, but can't put her children above her own needs especially her drug use, simultaneously tormented and confronted by and confronted by visions of her dead brother, which only come to her when she's high. Leonie's Leonie is embattled in what that reflect in that oh my god, I'm getting so tongue tied. In that in ways that reflect the brutal reality of her circumstances. Interesting. I'm gonna assume this has a lot to do with race then, because they've mentioned who's black and who's white quite a few times. Why is it capitalised? Interesting, interesting. Then we've got Shoebox Funeral by Elizabeth Boltz, which was released April of last year. So, growing up with 10 siblings on a farm in rural Grove City, this is what hooked me in, I believe, um, PA Beth Voltz came in contact with many animals. It's a biography, ah, okay, cool, as one would expect when you live on a farm. But the Voltz family farm would usually have a few additions each week. The townspeople would often drop off their unwanted or worse dying animals for the Voltz family to take care of. Aww, this is a heartfelt collection of short stories about the ducks, cats, <gasps> about all the animals yes i think this is exactly my reaction when i first saw this i need to read this soon <laughs> then we've got queen and spades but queen of spades sorry by michael shu young shum um this is released was released in october last year i, I keep going to say let's have a look then i've been saying that for everyone i swear um let's have a look <laughs> So it revamps the classic Pushkin fable of the same name, transplanted to a mysterious Seattle area casino populated by a pit boss with six months to live, a dealer obsessing over the mysterious methods of an elderly customer known as the Countess, and a recovering gambler who finds herself trapped in a cultish 12-step program with a heartbreaking climax that, ah, oh, that's what's putting me off, I don't want any heartbreak, um, climax that rivals the best Hong Kong gambling movies. Michael Sho Young, Shum's debut novel, delivers the thrilling highs and lows that come when we cede control of our futures to the role of the dice in the turn of the card. Again, I don't really read about casinos, but this sounded intriguing. The fact that it was a reimagining of a classic, I feel like I need to read the classic first. All right, I think we're almost there. Ginny Moon by Benjamin Ludwig. I have a feeling I might have shown these ones before, to be fair. This was released June last year, um, and this was really cute, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've spoken about this. So, Ginny is 14 years old and has autism. She likes the colour red, making lists, and exactly knowing what time it is. She doesn't like hugs, surprises, or people telling lies. After years of foster care, she has finally found her forever family. She has a new house, new parents, and a new name, but Ginny also has a big secret plan of escape. Every day, she wakes up at 9 o'clock and eats nine grapes for breakfast because when she was nine years old something terrible happened something only Ginny knows and she's the only one who can put it right that just sounds so precious I, I think this is going to be a little mystery something exciting is going to happen and it's just interesting to read um, and yeah I believe I've done 
a video talking about these other books before, I swear I have. Anyway, anyway thank you so, so much for watching this, what I can only imagine is a very, very long video, highlighting the backlog of my NetGalley reads and why I am a terrible reviewer. <laughs> Anyway, let me know your backlog. Is it as big as mine? Um, what sort of books do you tend to go for on NetGalley if you have like a theme, like a running theme? As you can see, I go for like the more general fiction, literary fiction sort of things in NetGalley because I feel like I can risk it a bit more. Um, but yeah, to the publishers that have given me early access, thank you so much. I will get around to these eventually. And even if it is later than sooner, I will always provide reviews on them. So yes, keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching. I will speak to you in another video soon. Bye.